Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Arctic P12 in my new noise testing methodology and see how it rakes up against the other fans I, well, retested using the new testing methodology. Let's get right into it. A little bit of explanation as to what we're going to be taking a look at. So I have the two, kind of this is an overview. So if you're new to the channel, I encourage you to watch the second half of the video where I actually go into a detailed explanation of each of the different tests that were done and why they were done that way and why they're actually important and what we're actually taking a look at. But if you're returning to this channel, then this gives you a broad overview of a was now scenario. So we have the fan ranking where it was before to where it is now, the model of the fan, the RPM was running, and the airspeed or CFM, depending on what kind of uh, uh, chart we're taking a look at. And this is all the 120 millimeter class fans I've taken a look at. And then on the 100% p on fan signaling, it's going to also have noise results in it. For noise normalized results, it's noise normalized, so it's just at 12 decibels. All right, so first up we have, through my CPU air cooler, the U12A noise normalized results. The Arctic P12 was ranked 40th, it is now ranked 6th. And I circled the Arctic F12, it was ranked 45th, and it's now ranked 13th. At 100% P W fan signaling, the Arctic P12 retains its position at 32nd, and the F12 retains its position at 46th. Uh, the cooler value proposition, noise normalized, the F12 is, was ranked 23rd, it is now ranked 3rd overall. The P12 was ranked 14th and is now ranked 2nd. Uh, the value proposition at 100% P12 and fan signaling, the F12 was ranked 12th and retains that position. The uh, P12 was ranked 3rd and retains that position. CFM, noise normalized performance, the F12 was ranked 37th, it is now ranked 7th overall. The P12 was ranked 45th, it is now ranked 16th. At 100% PW fan signaling, the F12 is ranked 40th and the P12 is ranked 39th. In the CFM value proposition, noise normalized, the F12 was ranked, not, was ranked 9th, is now ranked 2nd. The P12 was ranked 12th, it is now ranked 3rd. At 100% PW fan signaling, value proposition, the F12 was ranked 8th and retains that position, and the P12 was ranked 5th and retains that position. The 6-inch noise normalized mark, in my case airflow testing, the F12 was ranked 27th, it is now ranked 1st. The P12 was ranked 41st, it is now ranked 11th. So very good uplift in overall results, and you do notice an uptick in air speeds. At the 11-inch mark, noise normalized, the F12 was ranked 23rd, it is now ranked 5th. The P12 was ranked 19th, it is now ranked 2nd. The value proposition for the 6-inch mark, noise normalized, the F12 was ranked 5th, it is now ranked 2nd. The P12 was ranked 12th, and was now ranked 4th. The 11-inch mark, noise normalized, the F12 was ranked 5th, it is now ranked 3rd. The P12 was ranked 2nd, and retains that position. Now we're on to the detailed graphs. So the first step is my case simulation airflow test. So what size case do you actually plan on buying? If you're going to get a small form factor case or you're doing a short throw distance, the 6-inch mark is very important. If you're getting a compact tower, the 9-inch mark is very important. If you're getting a mid-tower case, something like the Fractal Design Mesh of High 2C, Corsair 550D, the Corsair Stormtrooper looking case, basically any other mid-tower case, the 11-inch mark is your key point to look at. And if you're getting a large tower, the 14.5 inch mark is your key location. How does it compare against uh, my control fan and a small sub selection of other fans? So basically just Arctic's fan selection I did there. So my control fan is this teal color. I know it kind of blends in there, but I kind of ran out of colors on my grass. But the control fan is three parts A12X25 to one part A14. Blending these two fans together gave me what I consider to be a very good composite fan that other fans should strive to beat. Now, all of that said, right here at the 6th mark we see the F12. It is performing quite excellent. It drops down, but then has a slower decay than many other fans. While the P12 doesn't quite have the same top end at the shorter distances, but it slightly outperforms it at the other uh, longer distances, the 9, the 11, and the 14.5. How are things looking at 100% P and fan signaling? Well, brute force always wins, but of course that comes at a sacrifice, usually in the form of noise, so the P12 Max is the clear winner here. My control fan is right there, this line, I'm drawing it on the screen. 
So the P14 is outperforming all the regular fans, and that's where I clearly say the larger diameter just does make a huge difference, but it's also a little bit noisier. F12 is right here. It's actually sitting last place on this graph, and the P12 is following my control fan very closely and then slightly outperforming it by the 14.5 inch mark. Uh, next, how do they compare against other fans? I've tested. So this is a subsamples selection of what I consider to be good fans, still good, uh, good but at the bottom end of what I consider to be good. So right off the bat, the P12 is sitting right here kind of in the, I'm going to say the middle middle of what I consider the good fans. And it actually outperforms them uh, by the 14.5 inch mark, indicating that it's got a very good frame and blade design at blowing air efficiently through a case, especially for a 120 millimeter class fan. As ooh, for the F12, it starts off at the top, has a very steep drop off, and then its drop off actually slows down, but it's not as good at actual case airflow as, well, its brethren, the P12, or some other fans. Next, we're looking at at 100% P-Dome fan signaling. So the F12 is sitting right here towards the bottom of what I consider to be good fans. So I put it between good and okay, probably like a C plus, B minus type category in terms of fan blade or fan design. So the B12 is outperforming the A12 x 5 which is a very fantastic result. Now, how is its noise performance versus airspeed? Airspeed is vertical, noise performance is horizontal. Better fans are sitting in the top left in this type of graph. The P12 is overall outperforming the A12X25 except for at a key a couple key locations. So right here at the like 13 decibel mark, it's underperforming compared to the A12X25. But in other points, it's outperforming it. And then at uh, maximum, it is outperforming the A12X25. So that's pretty crazy. The F12 on the other hand, uh, slightly outperforms the A12X25, and then it falls behind as RPM and airspeed climb. Now we're on to per airspeed through my CPU air cooler. And in these graphs, we have RPM versus airspeed, which is a blade efficiency graph. It's how good is this blade design at pushing air? And on the right side, we have noise versus airspeed. That's how efficient at producing air is this fan versus noise. And again, as a reminder, every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. Let's start on the left side. So on both these graphs, um, better fans are top left, burst fans are bottom right. And the F12 starts off well, slightly outperforming my blue control fan. It's pretty much sitting in line until we, yeah, and then it just kind of stops. The P P12 is slightly better than my control fan, so, you know, there's not much to say there. Looks pretty good. In terms of noise performance, the P12 is outperforming my control fan ever so slightly, more significantly at lower RPMs and air speeds, but as it climbs, they become more similar, but it is overall outperforming it. Now, how does it compare against other fans I've tested. So let's say your cooler came with the FK120. It's moving 0.6 meters per second of air um, at my noise normalized value. Well, if you upgrade to the P12, you're now going to be moving 1.3 meters per second of air. And uh, next up, we have the 100% uh, PWN signal mark. How do these fans rank up? Well, they're shifted way, well towards the bottom of the graphs. Now, they're not terrible results. 1.8 meters per second of airspeed is truly an excellent result because if you come up, the A12X25 is only sitting marginally above it at 1.9 meters per second of air. And this brings me to cooler airspeed versus decibel rating. So the F12 is right here, sitting pretty well in the middle of it, and then it kind of bottoms out. So it does surprisingly well considering it's an airflow fan for quite a while, and then it just kind of flattens out. It just can't produce that much more pressure going through it. Where And that's a limitation with its blade design. The P12, on the other hand, has a nice steady climb going on, leaving it at actually the upper end of the graphs. Now we're on to CFM testing. So CFM testing by itself, I'm totally okay with, but CFM testing how a lot of other reviewers use it, 
I think is completely invalid and incorrect. What do these fans do? Well, the F12 is kicking butt, kind of ironic compared to other tests where it was doing kind of worse overall. And then you have my control fan and the P12 is sitting underneath. Again, a lot of this was reversed in other tests, so it's kind of interesting. In terms of noise results, the P12 is sitting a little bit noisier than my control fan, except for at ultra low RPM, so thus air speeds, CFM. The F12 is the same sort of deal, and right here you have my control fan. So how do these fans compare against other fans that I've tested? Well, the P12 is sitting right here, and the F12 is sitting a little bit higher than it, so overall pretty good positioning. And at 100% PDO and fan signaling, they kind of swapped places, but are now shifted towards the bottom of the graphs. Uh, CFM versus decibel rating. So right here, this pink line is the P12, sitting overall functionally in the middle compared to all the other fans. The uh, F12, on the other hand, is sitting right here and is effectively towards the top compared to this small sample subset selection of fans. Now we're on to the value proposition. The P12 and F12 uh, as far as I can tell, standard retail pricing for them is about a $10 fan, making them on the cheaper side. So value is a simple calculation. It's airspeed per dollar. So if you're on an ultra tight budget, you want to pay special attention to these graphs because you want the absolute best bang for your buck. P12 and F12, six inch mark noise normalized performance are sitting right at the top of the graph. They don't get the top value pick, but they are certainly well towards the top. In terms of the 6 inch mark at 100% PDO and fan signaling, they are still well towards the top, but they have fallen behind several other fans that have kind of caught up to them, but the top value pick is still the TLG-12. At the 11 inch mark, uh, noise normalized, the P12 and F12 are once again noise normalized, sitting right up at the top. They are not the top pick, but they are certainly second and third place. At 100% PW fan signaling at the 11 inch mark, they're still right up at the top. Matter of fact, the P12 is in third place. The F12 is like in fifth place or whatever, but they're both ranked very well. Moving on to the CPU air cooler noise normalized performance and 100%, they are once again towards the top of the graphs in excellent positions, truly being top value picks. As we uh, increase the PWM fan signal to 100%. They've lost a little ground compared to other fans, but they're certainly top value picks nonetheless. The P12 Max takes the lead. The TLG12 goes to second place. And last but certainly not least is the CFM testing value proposition. The P12 and F12 have swapped positions finally, the F12 being slightly better at noise normal performance in, uh, in this sample selection. But at the end of every video, I like to show off my raw data. You're welcome to use this data for your own personal use uh, without asking me. But if you're going to use it in any sort of publication, whether that's video, written, or journal, I ask that you reference me and my channel. This data does belong to me. I'm the one who tested it. And it generally and it takes me one and a half to two hours per fan to generate this level of data. Uh, if you've got fan, a particular fan that you would like me to test out, please leave in the comment section down below, and I'll try to take a look at it. If you've got constructive criticism for me on how to improve my video and the flow of making it or making it more pleasant to watch, what you'd like to see added to it or taken away to add in those kind of improvements, please leave that in the comment section down below. And again, it's constructive criticism. If you're just going to rant and rave, I don't need to hear about it because I want to a good cohesive community here. Place it that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. if you join me on Patreon. It would really help me grow this channel and take it to the next level and maintaining being an independent reviewer. Um, buying a lot of fans has taken a been a huge hit. I purchased around a thousand dollars in fans so far. Um, other than that, have a great day. Hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and more.